fortunate. Hey guys, before we get into today's video, I wanted to come on here and shoot you a little bit of a PSA that I am a second year beekeeper and traditionally we have only done the crush and strain uh, harvesting method for our honey. These are the kinds of frames that we normally use and this is my first time harvesting out of the flow hive and I will acknowledge that there are user error reasons that my flow hive leaked, but being a second year beekeeper, I am pretty new and I know that the flow hive company really promotes their product to new beekeepers because it does really help make beekeeping accessible. So being somebody that they market to, I thought this would be an interesting perspective and some of the things that I was confused about in the very beginning. So I hope you enjoyed the video and stay to the end so I can basically tell you what I concluded after some research as to the reason why my flow hive leaked honey all over my bees. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day Trying to make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors And I'll sing until my lungs give out mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day And I will leave my windows open So that I can hear the sound of people talking And the wind blowing in the trees Oh This is actually something I wasn't really sure that I was gonna get to do this year. It took the bees almost the whole season to be able to come up into the flow frames and really work on them. They spent a lot of time up in the flow frames, just kind of hanging out up there, but they weren't really laying down wax or sealing up the frames as they should until probably around two months ago. The good news is they spent the majority of our fall flow filling up these flow frames and it's really time for me to get the honey off so that we can buckle these bees down for winter. So that's what we're doing today. It is a decently cold day out today. It's in the mid 50s as far as our high. We're not there yet today, so my bees really aren't flying very much. There's a couple of them here and there flying around, but I really wanted to come out and try to harvest the honey at a time where the bees weren't really flying because there's no nectar out there right now. So we are in what's considered a dearth. And if the bees really got wind of this honey outside the hive, they would come and it would be quite the frenzy. And I really didn't want to deal with that. So that's one of the things that I do like about the flow hive is that you can really harvest it no matter what the weather is. You can harvest in the rain, you can harvest at night, you can harvest when it's a little bit colder, it just might take a little bit longer for the honey to flow. One of the things that made me a little bit concerned about this particular honey harvest was that they haven't capped over basically any of these flow frames. And what that means is that bees haven't covered the honey with a wax capping in order to keep it nice for winter. And the bees generally don't cap over honey if it's not technically honey yet. So when the bees are running around collecting nectar and putting it in the cells, that nectar is actually at around 80% moisture. And what they have to do is beat their wings and use collected salts from around the area to cure that honey down to be less than 19% moisture. So in general, the bees will leave it open if it's not ready uh, to cap over or, or if it's not at that 19% moisture. So I do have a tool here that's going to help me determine if this is truly cured honey or if it's still decently wet nectar. Because of the way that it's flowing, I'm going to guess that we do in fact have honey here but I really like my refractometer it helps me confirm that because if I try to bring this inside and store it for any length of time any honey that has a moisture over 19% is going to ferment so this is my refractometer it's got this nice little window here that's where I'm gonna place the honey put this window down and I can look through this little hole and it's got a nice little chart in there I'll make sure to show you and I'll be able to tell exactly what the moisture content is
actually very pleasantly surprised to see that this honey actually is reading at a 17% moisture, which is very, very good. So I'm gonna place my tin foil on the top here. I am concerned about the bees discovering this honey and then coming and robbing this colony out. So this tin foil is gonna help keep them away from the goods. Now, something that I have heard of happening that I am seeing happen here is that once you crack the flow frames open in order to allow the honey to flow, sometimes the honey can still like escape the honey channel and flow back down into the hive. So this hive in particular has a single brood box, a honey super, and that's their winter super. And then they have the flow hive on top. And it looks like there's honey trickling all the way down through their screened bottom board and it's hitting the ground. I can tell you right now, this will result in a robbing type situation. It's just a matter of time. So what I'm gonna do now that I can see that happening is I'm actually gonna sure up the front of this hive with a robbing screen and I can't exactly shut off the flow. So those two flow frames that I have open, they have to stay open. I'm going to harvest what I can out of them, but I'm probably not going to harvest the other five frames in this flow super until I can get the entire super off and I'll harvest it away from the colony. This is really unfortunate. So the flow hive people do suggest that if you have a screened bottom board on your colony, that you put the solid board underneath of it that will help uh, basically keep any spillage inside of the hive. Um, they do also claim that the bees will then be able to collect that honey and redistribute it back into the cells that's not really the case because the bees can't get at anything that goes below that screen bottom board. And the tray that I do have to slide in under that particular colony's uh, screen bottom board is just a piece of plywood. And so when honey would collect on it, it would absolutely eventually spill over. So I don't think it would necessarily help. So with this robbing screen, only the bees that are in the hive will be able to figure out how to get in there. Any type of robbing bees from other colonies will try to fly straight into the entrance and they're not gonna be able to. Um, the bees that do live here will be able to figure it out and they will be allowed in. The guard bees will let them through. Thankfully, the spillage is underneath the hive and there's already a full screen. And so robbers, they'll be able to rob what's on the ground, which is fine. It's useless to me down there anyway. I just don't want this colony to be impacted because once we settle down for winter and I take this queen excluder off, this is their winter honey. And I want this colony to be able to have that. I'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke. I will try to fix what has been broken And take this weight off my shoulders Cause I know yesterday ain't coming back mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the past stay in the cold I'll listen to the ocean Let its unsaid words be spoken And I'll let my mind be carried by the waves
So I've watched the Flow Hive uh, suggested video for when to harvest and how to harvest your honey several times. And there's just some things that aren't super clear. And I understand that in general, you want to harvest your flow frames when they're at least 90% capped. And what that means is that the bees have had the opportunity to cap over with wax all of their honey stores. Sometimes towards the end of the year, like we are right now, the bees really just don't have the resources and they don't really get the chance to cap their honey. I knew that, so I tested the honey and it came back at 17%, which was really awesome. Anything under 19% is honey and is great to harvest normally. Now, when you have a flow frame, if the bees haven't put the cappings over the honey, that is when it can have a catastrophic leak inside your hive. So the flow frames are constructed of cells that do have a split in the middle. So when the frame is closed, the cells are closed and the bees put their propolis and wax on the seams and everything is well contained. And when you turn the key to open the flow frame, the cells move just a tiny bit and that allows the honey to flow through. Problem being, if they don't have it capped, honey is, ooh, we have a friend in here. She scared me. I didn't realize she was on the back of there. I'm gonna have to get out of here quickly because they're gonna come rob this out if I'm here talking for very long. Problem being, if this wall of cappings isn't there, when the honey does break through those cells, it flows down to the bottom into the honey channel as it should, but it also will flow out the side and drip down onto the colony below. So the bees have a part in the flow hive working optimally and that when they make this wall there, this helps protect the honey from entering the hive and it keeps the honey going down the center of the cells as it should and not bubbling over essentially. So this is what you're looking for in order to harvest your flow frames while the flow frames are on the beehive. What I'm gonna do to harvest the rest of the frames is take the whole flow super off of the colony and harvest it over a plate or, or probably a casserole dish well away from my colonies. I don't think there's necessarily a flaw with the flow super itself. I really honestly think that it's maybe not a beginner piece of material. I think you kind of have to know a little bit more about beekeeping before you can really jump into that with confidence. It's just a little bit fussy. And if you're willing to accept that, absolutely go for it. I think it's a really great product. Just know that there might be some situations where it's not ideal to use the flow hive as intended. Like with the situation that I have right now. It's fall time, we're in a dearth, the bees haven't had the resources to cap their honey. And so if I'm harvesting the flow hive and causing a leak of that proportion within the hive, it's going to cause a robbing situation. That would be a problem for the whole apiary. And as far as I know, there really hasn't been a catastrophic problem out in my apiary and I'm very grateful for that. But I think it's really important for anyone who's going to be harvesting out of a flow hive to understand that the capping is not only important for understanding that your honey is matured, but it's really important for the functionality of the flow frames. Beekeeping season is coming to an end pretty quickly here in southwestern Kentucky. I'm really excited for next season already. We had a lot of swarm catches in the beginning of this season and I made a whole playlist of them right here. If you're interested in seeing that, if you've got bee fever and it's in the middle of winter right now, go ahead and give that a click.